Friday night live improv from New York City. And next up, we have the dating game. What's going to happen is we're going to send Emmanuel off into the waiting room. Yes, Emmanuel, you are the bachelor. And we have four fabulous contestants all contesting for your emotions. So let's send Emmanuel into the soundproof booth. Um, I can't seem to do that. He actually got up and left. Does he know you, you're sending him into a breakout room? <laughs> breakout! Oh, why don't I put him into a breakout room and say, because I cannot kick him out. Emmanuel. <laughs> You made, him a co -host. you made him a co-host. He has to do it to himself. You have to, uh, Emmanuel, no. he's going to send you to a breakout room. You don't have you to do it to yourself, Emmanuel. I'm going to send you to a breakout room instead. Yeah, you can do it to yourself. And then I would have come back. I don't know how to break out myself. No, like, he's going to break you out. <laughs> break out. If I have some oil on my skin, I don't... Okay, you ready? I'm gonna I'm gonna send you. The, you, know, <laughs> have a, you, you go and uh, enjoy yourself in that breakout room, Manuel. No, don't physically go. <laughs> oh yeah, how are you? God, <laughs> he'll get the it. Zoom 101 Friday night right here the from Zoom, New York. Zoom, <laughs> Zoom, Zoom forever. All right, let's do this. Let's assign some stuff. Uh, contestant number one is Mark. Let's give him an obsession. What's a Mark obsessed with? Poodles. Poodles is correct. Uh, contestant number two is Benita. Let's give her a fear. Apples. <laughs> <laughs> Benita Applebaum. Ah. Terribly afraid of apples. Excellent. Victoria collects something unusual. What is it? Shoelaces. Shoelaces. <laughs> Big collector of shoelaces. <laughs> and finally, Elkie has a weird belief. Like everyone, half of, at least 60% of America. He thinks Kanye West is Jesus. Thinks <laughs> Kanye West is Jesus. He's not? Ye Jesus. Oh. Jesus, right? Jesus. There it is. <sighs> okay, so let me just quickly review before he comes back. Um, Mark, you are obsessed with poodle. Oh, he's back. Uh oh. And that's all. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> it's going so well today. So well. Hey, welcome to the dating game. Uh, and our contestant, Vladimir Medvedenko. I, did I get that right, sir? It's not bad. Uh, Vladimir Medvedenko. You can call me Vlad. We can save time. I'm finding bride. Oh, good. You're finding, finding bride. Good. Uh, then let's talk to our contestants. Let's start with contestant number one. Tell us who you are. Hey, my name's Dave. Hey, Dave, where do you hail from? Uh, I'm from Ohio. Dave from Ohio. There you go, Vlad. You don't get any more American than Dave from Ohio. Uh, contestant number two, who are you and where are you from? I'm Lisa Lachelle Jenkins, and I'm from Church City, Utah. Go Gators! Wow, Church City, Utah. All right, then. Can I enjoy a reptile. I'm sorry? It's something about a reptile? Very good. I enjoy reptile as well. Oh, Dana, yes, now I remember words. I remember how words work, and I'm using them. Contestant number three, what's your name? Where are you from? Uh, hi there. I'm Sarah from Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin. Yeah. Nice cheese place. place. And contestant number four, who are you and where are you from? Uh, my name is Vonda. Um, I'm originally from Atlanta, but I live in Chicago now. Vonda, excellent. Okay, and now you're in Chicago. Right on. Uh, Vladimir, are you ready to go? Let's hear your first question. Yes, my first question might be difficult, but I like to see how you will face the challenge. Uh, 
if you were to describe yourself as a natural disaster, which would you be and why? Okay, if you're a natural disaster, uh, let's go in order. Dave? Uh, well, I think that I would probably be a really rough, rough tornado. Sure. Uh, rough, rough <laughs> Tornado. Yes, of course you would be. Uh, contestant number two, I've completely blanked on your name. Lisa. Elisa. Lisa Lachelle. I'm sorry. Is it Elisa or Lisa? No, Lisa with two L's. Ah. My mama wanted twins. All right. Same question, if you please. What kind of uh, natural disaster would you be? Well, Utah is very hot, very hot, hot climate, and I would be a nice uh, disaster. So I would be something like maybe a, a, um, a, 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 a thunderstorm, a bad uh, thunderstorm, but I would only rain where it was a drought. That's so what I would do. Why would you only rain where it was a drought? I don't understand. Because uh, I, I want flowers and stuff to grow, and tr I want more trees and stuff to grow, but you know, just not certain fruits. I don't want them to grow. Okay, you don't want certain things to grow. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, that makes total sense. Sarah from Green Bay. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. So um, I think that if I was a natural disaster, uh, I would be a windstorm because with with rain, uh, your your shoes would get wet. And I don't like wet shoes. Uh, so maybe a windstorm would be okay. Uh, then you, you could tie your shoes to things and you could, you could not blow away. Okay, that makes, that makes perfect sense. And finally, Vonda. Um, easy. I'd be a, a hurricane, like Hurricane Katrina, you know, where um, almighty Kanye, uh, he, 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 he uh, basically told the world that, you know, Bush don't like black people. You know what I'm saying? Y'all y'all remember that press conference. He told the truth. He told what the world needed to hear. Certainly did. That was a very, Hurricane. that was a brave moment. Brave moment. For him. All right, Vladimir, uh, you got any favorites popping up? Well, I, uh, it stood out to me, uh, Lisa with two L's. I understand why your mother wish she had twins. I would enjoy two of you as well. And I <laughs> oh, man, what, Vladimir. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing here. Okay, Vladimir, let's hear your next question. Yes. Uh, my next question, it is a similar to first one, but if you were a household appliance, which would you be? And why? Okay, since uh, Lisa with two L's and two S's is, uh, is kind of in the lead, let's start with you. If you're a household appliance, what would it be? Well, if I could be a household appliance, I would be a, a garbage disposal <laughs> because I like to recycle stuff and I would like to make compost for the dry season in Utah, Church City, Utah, but just don't put certain produce in my tunnel, if you know what I mean. Because then I wouldn't work. I'm not at all certain what you meant, but I, my mind went somewhere terribly dirty. Uh, how about you, Sarah? If you were a household appliance, what would you be? Oh, gosh. Oh, well, uh, I think that uh, if I was to be a household appliance, I know not every household has these, but a floor buffer would be lovely uh, because if you buff the floor all real nice, you can wear your shoes indoors and you can really show off your, your set of laces, you know, just sort of jazz them up and, uh, and just show them off to the whole house, a different pair every day. That is a thing to show off. And uh, Vonda, if you're a household appliance, what would it be? I'd be a, I'd be a, a whole bunch of uh, lamps because I'd be like all of the lights, you know, I'd be shining bright. I'd be stronger through the wire like the almighty. Like the almighty. Oh, all right then. Dave, if you were a, um, 
if you were an appliance? What appliance would you be? Well, I'd probably be a shaver. Uh, so, like, when I, I have a lot of little four-legged friends who are my favorite things in the world, and I got to make sure that they're looking good all the time. So they can't have any extra hairs on them that includes around their beautiful faces and their beautiful little ears and their tails as well. All right, then, because you're four-legged friends. Vladimir, favorites? Uh, well, I care very much about the household, yeah? And so uh, it is very important for me to have nice floor. I want my guests to walk in when I have, when we have company, we understand that part of holding a good home is having a nice shiny floor. And so I, I appreciate Sarah's connection to the floor buffer and having nice, uh, yes. There going into uh, home. All right, last question for you, Vladimir. Good luck on this. Yes, I didn't, I didn't expect it would be so, so tough of a, of a choice here. But um, tell me about your favorite childhood toy. I, I expect when we uh, get to know each other, we would talk about growing up and our backgrounds. I'd like to start early and hear about your favorite childhood toy. All right. Well, Sarah, you're the, you're the new favorite of the group. Let's start with you. Your favorite childhood toy. Well, well Vladimir, uh, my favorite childhood toy uh, was actually a Cabbage Patch doll. And... I happen to have one that had fluorescent neon laces, just sort of, you know, 80s style laces. And, and I thought they were so cool that I went out and got myself another pair of Cabbage Patch Doll laces and I tried them on the Cabbage Patch Doll. And then I liked that so much that I went out and got another pair. And that's when everything started for me. I just, I just, I couldn't stop at that point. <laughs> all right. All right. Vonda, your favorite childhood toy. Oh, hands down. Uh, it's got to be uh, my tambourine. Yeah, it, 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 it was such a such a, 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 a blessing to have that tambourine. I, I, I used to take it to Sunday service and I still take it to Sunday service every Sunday. Easy. All right. All right. Religion is religion is important. Dave, favorite childhood toy. Well, when I was about six years old. We had a beautiful little baby poodle. And unfortunately, he died. And so my parents, um, they stuffed him. And, uh, and he was my best friend. And he it was, I put him up beside my bedside every night. And he was my favorite childhood toy. And I still have him. He's right here, actually. Yeah. I don't think we want to. Oh. No! Really terrifying. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. They don't judge you. My compliments to the taxidermist. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, Elisa, with two L's and two S's, your favorite childhood toy. Well, uh, I grew up on a farm, and uh, my parents gave me an easy bake oven, and I, I, I made a fruit pie. I made a damn good fruit pie, but I bit into it and there was a worm that was came from the, 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 the food and I made daddy go outside in the back and chop down all those trees that that, 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 that fruit came from and one of those pieces of fruit bumped me on my head and it split open and it had maggots in it and fruit flies and seven worms and they all crawled on me. What a delightful childhood memory. That's uh, it. That's your favorite toy. Okay. All right, Vladimir, uh, this is it. You have to reject three people and choose one at the end. So let's get to rejecting. Who's the first person you're going to reject? Uh, well, I, I might have spoken too soon with my first impression of uh, contestant number two, Lisa. What? I'm afraid, I'm afraid uh, one of you. <laughs> might be enough i'm i'm not <laughs> of agriculture and botanicals and working in gardens uh, that's not where i see my future but what what is she's afraid of something very specific that's botanical and gardening what is it 
You are afraid of, of earthworms and small bugs and creepy crawly creatures. Things that grow inside, uh, the, 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 they grow inside the thing that she's afraid of. She is afraid of decaying fruit. <laughs> so close. She was one day sitting under a tree and this fruit that f- fell on her head and she discovered gravity. She fears, she fears apples. <gasps> oh, she's got a terrible fear of apples. I'm sorry. I am so sorry, Lisa, with two L's and two S's. Uh, say goodbye to Vladimir. Does Vidania, Rika. Lisa, do we like to be rejected? No, we don't, Lisa. Okay. What are we going to do, Lisa? We're all just going to back away very, very carefully. Uh, who are you going to reject next? Maybe give, maybe if, uh, Lisa has some friends in the rejection pool. Uh, well, I will, uh, I will very quickly let you uh, know that contestant number four will be joining in the, uh, in the consolation circle. Why? Nothing. I, uh, it seems, it seems uh, I'm, I live a rather secular life. I don't think we would get along. You seem very religious and obsessed with, with, with uh, religious references and, and pop culture references. I, uh, Which pop culture references? I'm not a gold digger. I'm not a gold digger. Not, she's not. Which pop culture references in particular? But I don't, br- you know. <laughs> Is she obsessed with, I want to say Kanye, but I feel like she's... So much she thinks that Kanye is Jesus. All right, v- uh, Vonda. Uh, Neither. <laughs> goodbye to Vladimir. What have you got to say to him? Ah. <laughs> uh, I understand. There's no love lost. That is why I respect you, Vonda. One more rejection, and then then you then you have a glorious date. Uh, yes, one more step closer to my happiness. Unfortunately, uh, contestant number one will not be part of that joy. Dave? Dave. Dave. He seems very particular about beards and facial hair and shaving and hairiness. Uh, does not I enjoy a clean-shaven face? I like to feel like I can be someone who be with someone who will love me whether I have a beard or not. I think you're making a mistake. It's not humans that he's obsessed about their hair. It's something else. <laughs> what was that? What did you say? Oh, what? the hair of, of animals. Are you hearing your dog speaking to you? What kind of dogs do you have speaking to him? <laughs> Taxidermy dogs, stuffed dogs. Uh, stuffed poodles. He's crazy about poodles, the poor thing. All right. Uh, what do you got to say to Vladimir, Dave? Well, I just know we would have had a lot of fun with my real dogs and my fake dogs. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that would be a thing. Uh, I'm in your life. I'm, I'm, uh, I admire you. And, but enough is enough. <laughs> I won't leave my darling waiting any longer. Sarah, you are the one for me, I can imagine building a household together and wait, wait, wait. I mean, why is she the one for you why is she the one for you because we can combine our shoe and shoelace collection and have the world's greatest collection across the planet <laughs> we got to say to Vladimir, Sarah. Uh, well i've never had russian shoelace before <laughs> Oh, you will love Russian sneakers, Nikes, Adidas. Oh, stop. No, keep going. (laughs) The Scarborough, Ontario, where you're going for four fabulous days and two nights. Uh, That's the dating game. Give yourselves a round of applause. Well done. Well done. Well played, Emmanuel. God help you. Those were hard. And thank you for hanging around. We're going to be back for just a couple of more things. And then, uh, and then that's it for Friday night. But you stick around. There's, there's two more things. Mm-hmm.